buy or rebuy pedals that I've already sold 40,000 times. 40,000 40, times. times. Friends, I am on the hunt for gear and I am going to do this video that hopefully will save a lot of guitar players future headaches and a lot of guitar players that have been around for a while can definitely relate to this this is the cycle of musical hell or the cycle of gear hell that all guitar players go through so i swore off playing live and playing in a band ever again okay it's a long story i kind of touched on it in a couple other videos but this happens to a lot of musicians, okay? I have my own reasons and the own, my own way I process things. But what tends to happen sometimes is we burn out or we get sick of something or musicians, they'll have a bad experience in a band that breaks apart or maybe they didn't get an audition that they feel that they could or something just happens in their life. Maybe, you know, they get married and have kids or and they, they have this equipment sitting in the corner and they're thinking, well, I might as well sell it. I don't know how many times over the years I have bought, sold, and then had to rebuy Boss pedals. Now, me coming up on the guitar in the 80s and early 90s, <clears throat> there weren't many brands of pedals out there. Now there's so many freaking bands of pedals uh, and, and size of pedals. You can get mini pedals, this, that, blah, 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 blah. For me, I was always a boss guy. No, I'm not paid by boss. Obviously, it will help. My, right now, my channel is extremely small anyway. Why would they do that? But I'm always going to be honest with you guys about products. So when I was coming up on guitar, you know, you had Dunlop made wah pedals. Boss made effects pedals. And eventually, uh, the next brand I remember in my head that came into play was a, a, a brand called DOD. So I remember them for pedals as well. But now there's so many different types of pedals. If there were other companies that made pedals back in the day, they were, you know, which I'm sure there were. Uh, sorry, I thought I had an admirer there. He kind of enjoyed standing behind my vehicle. A little creepy. Anyway, when it comes to pedals and gear, you, you have two routes to pick when you pick what your setup's gonna be. You have pedals for simplicity. Or you can use rack effects for versatility. And I've had my phases where I've had the big rack effects units and road cases and I'd spent countless hours programming like the nanoseconds of different delays and, and reverbs and choruses to sound like so-and-so and this and that. That's not me anymore, man. I, I, I'm getting older. I'd rather spend my time doing other things. I like simplicity. So I'm more of a pedal board guy now. And really, a wise man told me one, one time, many years ago, he said, look, you know, you can punch around on those things all day. And yeah, it's great for versatility. But really what it comes down to is your fingers, a good guitar, a good amp, a good tube amp even, and a few pedals. And that is rings true for me. So what I'm going to tell you guys is to stop this cycle of gear hell. If you have pedals, don't sell them. Put them away. If you're going to sell them, take three months to think about it, okay? Because you're going to end up the 50, 100 bucks, 120 bucks, whatever it is you get for them. When you sell them, is it going to be worth it when you blow it on pizza for the family that night? Or, you know, when you, you keep them put away so you don't have to rebuy them down the road because you never know what happens. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, I had my own reasons. I played in bands for many years. I, I gigged and I burned out of music completely between gigging all the time and teaching countless guitar students, I really needed a break from music. You know, my last rig, I sold was a $6,000 guitar rig. I don't regret selling it because I went to a student who's a friend of mine and his band's doing things, or recording, playing, touring, all that, and it went to a good home. I don't regret that. But now, <clears throat> when I burnt out with music, it, it went away for a few years. It didn't come back in three or four months. But now that it's coming back, I'm like, oh, and I got an offer for some really good old friends of mine who are good music, really good musicians, just to put something together, just to have fun, see how it goes. And I'm like, I don't even have a rig. Now I got to put a rig together. So at times, do I wish I held on to those pedals so I didn't have to go through all this again? Yeah. 
And for me, there's only a few pedals that I really need, and I'm going to break that down further in other videos. But guys, if you're going to sell gear, really think about it. Take three months before you make the decision. Even if it's a little pedal, because you know what? You might, over the cycle of your life, buy it, sell it, and rebuy it about three or four times. And believe me, if I had hair, I'd like to pull my hair out right now. As I am now on the hunt for putting my pedal board together. And I have to buy or rebuy pedals that I've already sold 40,000 times. So anyways, guys, really think about it before you sell your gear. Sometimes it's worth just hanging on to it, okay? Even if you think you're done or maybe you think money's a little tighter or you're going through a life change, just put them away because you'll probably end up digging them out three months later, three years later. You don't know. You can never say never when it comes to music. All right, guys, I hope that helps and we will see you soon.